Today, I'm going to show you how I built this team of agents within N8N in order to manage my schedule, manage my CRM, schedule Zoom meetings for me, and so much more. It makes scheduling meetings, making Zoom calls, sending emails to the attendees of the meeting all very seamless. I'm going to show you an example of what this looks like in action. Now, the beautiful thing about this system that I absolutely love is that I've connected it to Telegram and I have one agent that controls all communication between me and all of my other team of agents that I built. So if I'm on the go, I could use my phone on Telegram as you see on the left side of the screen, or I could also use my desktop app if I want to communicate with my agents that way. But I can send off basic queries like, what are my upcoming Zoom meetings? And I can send that off. And now my agent, my orchestrator agent, is going to go send this query to the respective agent that has my Zoom meetings. So it's going to send that query to the Zoom manager and then return all of my upcoming Zoom meetings. And the cool thing about the system is it's multimodal. So I could also speak into this and have it return back responses as well, which is amazing if you're on the go and you wanna use something like your phone. And as you can see, it gives me 10 upcoming meetings that I have. I've been doing a lot of test events getting this thing working. So I've got a lot of test Zoom meetings within my account. But as you can see, it brings back each and every one of those events. And it even gives me a join meeting link. So if I click join meeting, it's actually going to take me to that Zoom call. I'll select join the meeting for fixing the espresso machine. And then I can hit yes on this link. And as you can see, it actually takes me to the Zoom link. So we can use this link in emails. We could use this link anywhere we want in order to send to the attendees. I'm going to hit end for now. We don't need to be on the Zoom call. I could even ask it specific questions about my Google Calendar. For example, what events do I have on my Google Calendar tomorrow? I could send that off and I just wanted to showcase using multimodality with this system as well. You could even add in an image input so that when you upload an image, it goes to your orchestrator agent. But it pulls in the events very quickly. It says on February 7th, you have the following upcoming event. And it looks like all I've got tomorrow on my calendar is my morning routine, which I've got a lot more events today than I have tomorrow. But as you can see, all I have on my calendar tomorrow is my morning routine. I could even create events, create a virtual Zoom call for tomorrow at 2 p.m. that is with Jane going over how to fix the espresso machine. I'm always using that example. And what this is actually going to do is do more than just create a Zoom call for me, create a Google Calendar event. It's actually going to go search my CRM for the contact that I have named Jane. As you can see, it just added in that Google Calendar event live. And the only reason it knew that Jane's last name was Doe was because it searched my CRM before creating the event. And if I click into this Google Calendar event, you can see that it also added the Zoom link down here in the description. And we could even send an email to Jane. And we don't have to give Jane's email because it can search my CRM and find Jane's email. So I could just say, send an email to Jane letting her know all of these event details. And just like that, it's actually going to draft up an email for me and then send it to Jane. As you can see, it says the email reminder for the Zoom call scheduled for tomorrow has been successfully sent to Jane Doe. So if I go to my email inbox, as you can see, it actually did send that email. But since Jane at example.com is not an actual email, it didn't send this off. But you can actually format different emails and give it the Google Calendar event link. You can give Jane here the meeting link. So all she has to do is hit this to join. And you can customize these emails however you want. But today I wanna to walk you through step-by-step step my thought process that went into setting this up. I'm going to show you how I diagrammed out this workflow. I'm going to be clicking into each workflow and showing you all the little intricacies. That way you can start implementing a system like this yourself. Now, if you want the straightest path for learning how to build AI agents in N8N, then join our AI Foundations community. We have a 30 plus module course going over N8N agent building. You'll get all the fundamentals of AI and then in-depth agent training, calls where we do live calls. And then of course, the lovely community that supports each other. We have posts in here about AI news and everything related to AI. But I also have the meeting manager agent module in build agents with N8N. And this is your fast lane for installing this template. I have all of the different blueprints that you're going to need. These are just one click installs. So you can get the system up and running in under an hour. And I have videos showing you and walking you through each step of the process and how to set it up for yourself. I'll leave a link to our community down below in the description and the top pinned comment. Here we're teaching you how to fish and we're giving you fish. It's like the best of both worlds.
So let me break down how this system is actually working. So for starters, what I have here is I actually have eight different workflows that are all connected to the meeting orchestrator. Now the meeting orchestrator is where the conversation starts and the conversation ends. You need an orchestrator agent that points to all of the tools that can actually do the job. This is just how we get our spoken or our written text into N8N. And then we have this orchestrator agent here. And what this orchestrator agent's job is, is to send my query, my, my text that I gave it to the right tool for the job. So in here, I like to call this a classifying agent because what I do is I give it all of the tools that it can use. I say, you can contact calendar, CRM, Zoom, and email. I say, your goal is to create and manage meetings for the user with their CRM, Google Calendar, and Zoom. So I'm just mentioning all the tools that I have available. And the cool thing about instructions is you can put in these dynamic functions right here. And then I basically go in and give instructions for each part of the process. I say, when the user wants to create a meeting, determine the following, who, about what, when, where, and attendee availability. So if I don't mention one of these, it's not going to go create a meeting for me. What it's actually going to do is respond back and say, hey, I need some more details before I create this event. And this is the mindset you want to start getting into when you are crafting big agentic systems is you want to start not putting all of your tools under one agent, but rather putting workflows that contain proper tools or areas that contain the tools in order to get the job done. This is a module that I taught within my course on N8N within our school community. Let's say you get a user query of what content do I have scheduled on LinkedIn? And you have your main orchestrator agent determining which way your query goes. If I ask about content on LinkedIn and I've got two areas connected to my orchestrator agent, for example, a financial conductor and a content conductor, these areas will then decide which tools to use. So if I ask about what content do I have scheduled on LinkedIn this week, the first decision is going to be classifying which type of area that task falls under. Is that a financial question or is it a content question? It's a content question, great. So once the content conductor or the content agent receives that query, then it decides which tool to use under the content tools. So in this case, it would definitely use the content manager. It wouldn't be looking for trends and it wouldn't be responding to proposals. So within the content manager, we also have other tools that we can use like search for post, publish post, delete post, update post. So now I'm going to walk through the process of diagramming out a very small agentic workflow and showing you how I might create this from start to finish. That way you understand the ideas behind it and you can start implementing your own tools, your own agents and so on. I always like using a diagramming tool like BoardMix or Miro because I can draw out these shapes. So let's say we want our automation to start with a user input. We wanna be able to type in something. And first what we need to set up really is the orchestrator agent. So this user input is going to go to a query classifier. That's what we can call this. And this query classifier is going to determine which area our query falls under. So what, so what type of area does our question or request fall under? Maybe it falls under calendar, maybe it falls under email. Well, instead of just giving one agent access to all those tools and expecting it to do something spectacular and consistent every single time, just send it to the area that you know can do the job. So maybe if we wanna set up an agentic system that organizes our calendar, organizes our email, or searches for emails and searches for calendar events, what you wanna do is you just wanna have your first agent decide which area is best for the job. So maybe you have a calendar area, and also an email area. You wanna start thinking in this type of structure. And you can think of these areas as full out agentic systems, right? That take in a user query, so whatever you ask it, this is going to pass whatever you ask to the respective areas. And from there, these areas could have multiple tools. Maybe you have a tool uh, right here that actually searches your calendar, right? Maybe you have a tool that creates events for your calendar. Maybe in your email, you have something that searches emails. Maybe you have another tool that creates drafts. This is the way that you wanna start thinking about your agentic systems. You need to pass your query to the respective area, and then the respective area knows how to deal with the query and which tools to use. So let's build that out real quick. And I wanna show you an example of how I thought about building out my system that manages all my events, all my meetings, all my Zoom calls. So I would hit add step and we could hook this up to whatever we want for simplicity. 
we'll just do a chat message. So now we have a chat that we can type and ask things in. But before we get a response, we actually need to hook up an AI agent to this. So next what we'd need is our query classifier agent. So I can hit advanced AI and then select AI agent. This is what's going to be classifying our queries. So we can add a system message and we can make it an expression. I can just say, you are a query classifier. You are to determine the query type from the user into one of the following categories. And then I can put the two categories. Maybe we just have calendar and maybe we have an email category. Once you've classified which type of user request slash query is being made, send that exact user query to the respective area. So this would be an example of a small classifier agent, right? And now we wanna pass whatever we said to the area that can handle it best. So I'm going to add a chat model to this real quick. That should work with GPT-40 mini. And then I'm going to give this agent memory so that it can remember what was said in the chat. And we can just do that by doing a, a simple window buffer memory for now. And it already has our JSON session ID in there. And now we need to add workflows as tools. So we need to add a calendar area and an email area. I'm gonna save this and first I'm gonna go create the calendar area. So in order to start a workflow, uh, when being called by another workflow is to hit this and then select when called by another workflow. So the only way this is going to run is when we call it by using our classifier agent. But now we need to put workflow inputs. What do we want uh, input into this workflow? Well, we want chat input. So I'm going to put chat and then with a capital I input because this is going to be the user query from the previous example. This is going to be the workflow input that we can map in the other example and I'll show you what I mean in a second. And then we can just connect another AI agent node to this. So I'm going to select AI agent and then we can define this below and then I'll type in user query. And what I'll do is I'll map the user query. So I'll execute previous nodes and as you can see, we wanna map chat input into the text field as an expression. So it's going to receive the question that I asked my classifier agent. So how do we want it to deal with that question? Well, we could get crazy. We could add a system message and tell it how to deal exactly with our expression. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to add tools to this agent. First, I'll add the chat model, beautiful. And then I'm going to add a tool. And let's just say this is our calendar area. What we can do is name it calendar area, and now we can give it access to our Google Calendar. Here you could connect an account, do whatever you need to do, and don't think about this like just connecting to Google Calendar, but think about this more in a broad sense of how you connect tools to one another. So let's say we want this to be able to do two things. Maybe we want it to search events. So I'll select the proper calendar, and then I will select get many. And then I can make a custom AI expression so that based on whatever I give to this AI agent, it can determine what dates I want to select from by just using AI reasoning. So I'm going to type in right here instead of now, I'm going to type in from AI, and then we can define what we want from AI. Well, and after we want the start time, and then I can put that in quotes just like that. And then I need to describe what is start time. Well, I can put a comma, then more quotes, and I can say the start date and time of the events needing searched. Beautiful. And now I can do the same for before, except I can make this end time instead of start time. And I can just say the end date and time of the events being searched. And in order to define this a little bit better, we can even add a system message showing what a good start and end time looks like so that your agent has that knowledge on, on how to do this. So you could even put like today's date is and give it the now expression so it understands what the date is right now. And then I can give some date and time handling instructions. So right here, I'm just giving the format of how I want it to output its response, basically telling it to search the entire day. And I could even put some basic instructions. You take user queries and call the proper tools. And so now we have a search Google Calendar event created. We could add as many tools as we want, but I think you get the understanding, right? You're just defining all of your tools. An important thing to do is actually for tool description, 
Instead of setting automatically, set manually and actually describe what this tool does. I can just say search as Google Calendar Events. And now we need to connect this workflow input to our main agent, our classifier agent. So in order to do that, we can save this, go back to our orchestrator right here, and then we can add that calendar agent as a tool. So I'm going to hit the plus button and hit call N8N workflow. And then you want to be descriptive here. So I could just say calendar tool, and then I could say call this tool to search my calendar or create events in my calendar. And the, here, this just gives the AI more context into what you want to do with this tool. Now you can select a workflow and you want to select that workflow you created. So we created the test calendar area. And as you're going to see, our workflow inputs pull into here. So this is where we send our chat message to the workflow is within this workflow input section. And we can use another from AI expression or we can get even more specific and just map our user query. So I could send some test data. I could just say test query and send that off. And now we can actually map this within our N8N workflow uh, now that it's passed through to the AI agent. So I can double click into this N8N workflow and then I can actually go to mapping and map my chat input so that it pulls my whole query into my Google Calendar area. So now I can rename this like calendar. This name is just for you. But now if we were to ask a question about my calendar, it should send my calendar data to that workflow. So I could say, search my calendar for upcoming events. And remember, all this agent is doing is determining which workflow to go to. So if I ask it about a calendar task, it should send it to this area. I'm going to send off this query. As you can see, it sends that task to that specific tool because it understood, okay, this is a calendar request. And it's actually going to retrieve all those events and then bring them back to the chat. So this is the way you want to set up all of your tools. As you can see, it gives me all of my events and my recurring events even from my Google Calendar that I connected. So if I were to ask it a question like, get my CRM contacts from my CRM, it's not going to send a calendar because we haven't specified that as a calendar task. It says, it seems like your query is related to accessing CRM, which falls under email functionality, and it can't complete that request. So this is the way you want to go about setting up all of your tools. You can even within your tools have more tools, right? So I could have an email area that sends off to another agent that's super good at crafting emails, and it's only focused on that. I recommend keeping each one of your individual agents at a very high level and having tools underneath that that your agent can then use in order to get the job done. So I hope that this video was helpful. Again, if you want to master AI agent building in a much slower, more understandable format, then I highly recommend joining our AI Foundations community. I have the meeting manager agent within the course content. We have a ton of different courses in here, but if you scroll down to the agent builds within our N8N course. As you can see, I have this entire meeting manager agent just ready to install for you with tutorials on how to link all of your accounts. So I hope that this video is helpful in understanding how you might go about setting up an agentic system that manages your meetings. And the thought process that went into it for me is exactly what I showed you today. So I hope that that was helpful for you. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.